Hi, everybody. Getting myself ready. Putting paint. I'm just using regular paint that I always use. Um, so if you've painted with me before, the same paint is what I'm using for look at this rock painting. So this is not something I can put on my easel. I'm going to have to paint while holding it up. You guys can see, well, this is a pretty big flagstone rock. Hi from Belleville. And um, of course, you can use a canvas. You can definitely use that. And you can say where you're come or you're tuning in from. From Barry, great. So um, I think this is going to be this is our first rock painting event. I didn't really think through how heavy this was going to be, but we can make it work. Not a problem. Just grabbing my paints, the regular paints that I use. And if you're painting on a rock like I am, um, first of all, you're not going to need a brush like this, but something you know, still a large kind of brush to get the background done. I'm scooping my paint out. And you only need very little paint. If you're doing it on a rock. If you're not doing it on a rock, then probably need more paint. Um, okay, so if your rock is really dark, uh, Mine's like a light gray. I don't, I'm not going to do anything to it, but you can paint it like white over tops, like almost like you're priming and gessoing it. I feel like that would be a good idea. And if you guys are looking for other surfaces to paint on, stuff like this, like a coaster, usually from canvas, these are really good. You can do the exact same thing on that. So here's the painting. Well, here's the rock painting. It's heavy. I can't put it on anything because we'll just break it. So I can't put it on an easel. Um, there it is. I'm not going to be holding this up while I'm painting. So hopefully you guys have an image for reference or you can just trust me as I show you how to do it. <laughs> yeah, small canvas would be great. Okay, so for paints, um, like I said before, um, my paint is still there. Uh, yeah, same colors, primary and black and white. Oh, goodness, I'm getting low on this. Okay, so we'll get started very shortly. And good morning from Australia. Good morning. <laughs> it is nighttime for us. You guys are like a day ahead. This should be great. All right. So I think we can probably get started. Uh, I'll just quickly go over the brushes. So a large, I'm going to start with the background and then I am going to be using more smaller brushes like something like these guys. Pretty similar to what I use for a canvas. So 
So those are what I'm using. Okay, so image of the rock one more time before I pick up my other heavy rock and I put it on here to start painting. Oh, hi, Sherry. Yes, glad you finally found us. Okay, so here is what we are making. And again, any surface will do. Uh, if you're not doing on a flagstone, maybe you have just like a rock of some sort and a canvas works as well, a small canvas or a piece of wood. So the idea is just to try new things, try painting on different things. All right, so I'm gonna grab my, my new one. And they're all different. So here we go. I feel like this is probably a good way to position it. Just figure it out what way you wanna do it. Okay, now um, I wouldn't really suggest watering or wetting the, the rock to start. You don't really need to do that. And um, uh, I don't know what you mean by the number. So commit your comment. If you want to rephrase that one more time so I can answer your question. I'm going to be starting with my very large brush. Oh, this, this is flagstone. You can get it like um, one of those landscaping businesses that they have, you know, like you just go and get it from there. Or you maybe just pick it up from your backyard. Maybe you have a flagstone. Okay, so for the painting, um, I'm going to start with a nice light yellow. And no, you don't need to prime. I'm not priming this. I'm just going to paint right over top. But if you want to start painting it white first, you can. And I'm taking some yellow, putting that on the side, and then taking some white so I get a nice light yellow. It is a flagstone. I did not buy this rock. <laughs> it's a flagstone that you can get at a landscaping company. Um, I don't know if Home Depot really has them, but okay. So I want my uh, my sky to be starting right about here, and then everything below that I'm going to have as my water. Going right across. I'm going to do a little bit higher. So I'm just going to drag it up a bit. And you just have to, the only difference really with this rock is you just have to go over the same spot a couple times to get in the little creases. Yes, you can definitely do it on a canvas for sure. I'm just starting with light yellow. And I'm just going over those, getting all the little cracks in the rock. Yep, and as usual, this is recorded. So if you ever, especially if you're painting on a canvas, you might find this is gonna go, uh, this could go a little bit faster because on a rock, you can see that the surface area that we have to cover is not quite as big. So that is my little strip of the light yellow. And as usual, I like to see um, thumbs up and the, hitting the like button when you guys are done pretty much a step. And you can always ask me questions. So after you have that, I just wash off my brush again, or just for the first time after that. And I'm totally doing this from a different angle. This rock is really heavy. So for the for, or yeah for the next step we have that 
Now I'm going to start switching to, I like to go to a pink. And so after you cleaned off your brush, I'm just gonna take a little scoop of red, same, same brush still, and then a little scoop of white with it to get more of a pink. This is very light. I'm gonna start with a nice light pink. And I'm gonna go right over top, just above that yellow, so that I can, and a little bit of dip of water helps because um, then you can blend it with your previous paint. I actually find that this blends a lot easier because it's a different surface and it's just, um, it can absorb the water. Uh, I'm just grabbing some more pink. And I'm just gonna, you can add more red to make it more of a hot pink as you go up. So I'm just adding more red as I go up. I just dip it in red. And to prevent it from looking very dull, I just add more paint. It's a nice look. You did your floors on a flagstone. Nice. That's great. Now you have lots of canvases pretty much. So let me know that you did that. That you did this as well. And um, like I said, this is going to go a lot faster because we have a, such a small surface. So if you have to go back to anything, you can just go back to your yellow and white and then see how I, I got a little bit of pink here. I can just go back over. And it dries really fast too, and it blends really well. I just really liking the rock canvas to use instead. It's pretty cool. I'm going to clean off my brush again. Okay, so I think, well, I'm not sure actually, are we, are we done that step? I use a Curry's paint brand. I like to go to Curry's, it's pretty close to me and also the Serres is really good as well. But all my paints that I've been using are Curry's. And so Anita, how high on canvas, as you can see, if you were to try to section off this rock we have about halfway up or maybe um, a little bit more we have the water area and then i started the sky about halfway with the yellow and then i started with the pink and sherry you can access the tutorials for later just by clicking on the videos tab on our facebook page so that should be one of the spots to access it. And for this one, it's also on the videos page tab and also on the home page. So when you come to our home page, you can see it's probably going to be pinned to the top. Now, also, I believe you can just pause this video right now. Um, Facebook allows you to do that some of the time with the live videos. And yes, you can do it on a tile. So if you need to, if you're doing on a canvas, you need more time, just pause the video. I'm pretty sure it'll work. I'm going to take a uh, red on my brush and I'm going to put that on the side and I'm just going to take a little dip of blue and I'm going to start making a purple with a bit of white added to it. And I'm just mixing that so I get a nice 
lighter purple. And I'm starting to make, I'm gonna put that purple just above and into the pink. So again, to make purple, it's red, and then just take a little bit more red than you're taking blue so that you get more of like a nice, true purple. And you can add a little bit of white to lighten it up. So that is done for the purple. And hopefully we're doing that step making sure there's no questions. Also, we like to hear and see your suggestions for themes that we should paint next. Um, I don't think I would do it on a heavy flagstone again. But I think rock paintings are fun. We did some, we did a wood one. Oh, Celine. And hopefully you enjoyed your time at Curry's because I usually leave with some stuff. They have lots of good stuff. Yeah, this one's like not as stressful as painting on a canvas because it's on a rock and it's got natural little bumps in it and it's, you don't have to worry too much about what you're doing. Okay, so I'm getting some thumbs up. I'm just looking at them to seeing where you guys are at. And I know that we're gonna be at different paces. Like I said, you can pause the video if you need to. I'm pretty sure, maybe not. Maybe I was lying about that. But again, you can watch this later. Okay, so to move on, on to our next color. Um, it's, you know, it's really up to you what kind of colors you want to do. And I'm going to start switching again to a darker purple with more red. So a lot of red, very little blue. And I'm just going to get a nice kind of like deeper red purple at the top before I get to my dark blue because I want to make it look like it's getting darker. And I'm just kind of swiping and sweeping that into my previous color to help blend it and it blends super well. Because again, the rock, there's something about it that makes it blend really well. You can go up quite a bit because I'm going to be doing um, more like blues up here, dark blues. Okay. I don't think it worries about, you don't have to worry about the brush actually too much. The brush, really any any size, like I, I use a large one just to get my surface area filled pretty fast. And how do you get that bright purple? Um, no, I use actually primary blue. You can use phthalo blue as well, but I use, Primary uh, 
yeah, primary blue and then red. But that one I just did, I did a lot of red and very little blue, and it turns out to be more of like a red, bright purple. And I didn't add any white to it. So after, um, if you, when you guys are done this and you plan on putting this outside, definitely seal it with uh, weatherproof, some sort of weatherproof thing that you can do. It's really good to put on so that it protects your rock outside. And Doreen, the waterfall painting. Are you looking for the waterfall painting? Um, I don't think I'm freezing. It's just, I don't think it's that, Jennifer. Something's been going on lately whenever I think we go live or when people go live, sometimes it just freezes up but for some people. So give me thumbs up when that part is done before we do the last color in our sky. Hmm. Um, Tara, that's, that's so sad reading that. I'm so sorry for your loss. But I'm glad there's some sentiment for this with this painting. Show me in yes, show me when you're done too. Love to see the results. Okay, so for the last color up top, I am using on my clean brush. I'm just gonna take blue, mostly blue. So that's mostly blue and a little bit of red. So it's the opposite. Last time I took mostly red and took a little tiny bit of blue. Now I'm taking um, a big scoop of blue and just a little bit of red. So I get a nice deep violet color. Okay. And I'm just going along the top and then drag it down into that previous red purple. Trying to get all those little cracks in there at the top. So that's pretty much most of the sky done um, before I do the sun, which is the last little thing in the sky, but we're going to do that in a little bit. I want to get a nice base coat for the bottom. I'm going to do my water before I do the sun. Um, that's okay. I just missed some. Oops, sorry, guys. I missed some of your comments. 
Um, so again, I got this rock from the garden. <laughs> it's uh, not really something you just go and buy by itself. And I'm so glad that you guys want to paint. This is like a different kind of theme. And I'm trying not to go too fast because I know that some of you are painting on a canvas. Yes, I think it is harder on a canvas than on a rock, to be very honest. You guys, um, some of you said that you're new for tutorials, so this would be more of an easy kind of painting because of the surface that we're working with. Whereas with a canvas, it is um, it takes a lot longer. There's more blending involved. So yeah, just um, you can try both. You can try on the rock and then do on a canvas afterwards because now you have more confidence. Rachel, that's a good idea. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of results. Okay, so I think we're ready for water. Yep, okay. I'm just going to get my blue because I only had a little bit. Now, I am taking the same brush because, you know, just filling it in. So just at the bottom here, I'm going to take my blue paint and add just a little bit of white to it. So a little bit of white to the blue. Mix that around. Now, we'll just go right underneath that yellow, just do a nice line. I'm going to start dragging that down. So as I go down into the bottom here, you can start switching up your blues. You can actually just take plain blue, so you can just use that as is. It gets pretty dark. That's why I like adding a bit of white, so you can add lots more white to get a nice light, light blue. And just drag it to the very bottom. And Jennifer, um, we do have actually a comment pinned. So hopefully you guys are finding this relaxing. You're painting on a rock. I'm sure it's a nice little change from on canvas. Also, if this is your first time painting, this is a good start. I saw awesome some of you said that this is your first one.
And just getting to the very bottom. It's a little bumpy there, so I just have to keep moving my brush around just so it gets in all the little cracks. It makes it a lot easier. And Sue, that's okay if you're late. You're actually not really late because you can watch this afterwards. And Lorraine, that's a really nice idea. Using pretty much any surface to create art. So I'm just looking for the thumbs up if you were able to do that step. So how many of you are actually painting on a rock or something similar to this? Um, Sue, so there is a link afterwards. It kind of generates a link after we go live. It's one of those things that we can't really make a link right now, but it'll be there. You can watch it. Sweet. Huge stone, Deborah. Nice. All right. I'm sure we're going to see lots of variety. I'm pretty excited. Okay. I got some thumbs up. And now I think we can actually start making that sun. Yeah, very. Um, yeah, like I said, the rock is easier right now, so there's not much blending that you have to do. It it easily blends. Okay, so now for the next step, I'm going to switch my brush to something like this one right here. Something a bit smaller, more detailed. Q-tip works as well. I always tell people a Q-tip can work. And I'm going to take actually just white on my brush. I'm just going to dip it in my water and take white. So I'm just putting that. I'm trying not to get like a whole lot of it on the end of my brush, so it's not going to be all, you know, clumpy and no the way i do it actually is i do something pretty simple um i just do like a half circle like a dome shape right in the middle it might be hard to see because it's very similar to your yellow color and it's really supposed to be more of like a highlight it doesn't stand out as much depending on you know how light or how dark you went with your yellow And then what I do from here is I just start from inside and I flick it out a lot so that it looks very shiny, sunshiny, especially on the sides. And there you go. You can see like a nice shiny sun 
from the horizon line. Um, Kathy, you're painting on wood. That's a good idea. We actually did a tutorial on wood. It does absorb a lot of paint on wood. That is for sure. So blending is probably not the easiest. Whereas this rock doesn't really absorb it. Like, it absorbs a little bit, yes, but. Okay. So you can do as many lines as you like. If you want to do um, a lot, a little, I like to do a lot because it makes it just a lot more brighter. And I go a lot on the side of the horizon line. So it's just nice and bright there. And Jennifer, I feel like I'm talking to your daughter, I think. Let me know. Denise, brilliant. <laughs> Just so your broken patio stone, perfect. Waste not. And okay, so if your blue isn't as light, just go over it with much more white on, uh, with some blue. So more white and then very little blue. Okay, so did we do that nice sunshine? Those little sunshine rays. You can come back and do a second coat if you want it to sh like, you know, be more shiny and stand out more with the white. It's always a possibility. Or in a cardboard. Yep. I would paint on cardboard. Hmm, that's nice. Okay. So I got some thumbs up there. And I'm just going to tilt that for a sec. So now, after we've done that, I'm still using the same brush, except I'm going to be now adding some little bit of yellow with my white because I'm going to be putting a reflection into the water. And for those who have done this with me before, probably have an idea of how to do this. It's not going to be as hard on a rock because you just do little straight lines. And I'm going to go straight underneath, long, like a longer line here. And then as I get down, it's always good to actually, for this uh, step, just take a little dip of water and mix it with your paint, your light yellow. And just kind of do little streaky lines, kind of like... I almost like it looks like a tornado because it goes a little bit thinner towards the bottom here. And make sure you add enough white to it. Otherwise, it's going to turn a little bit green with the yellow. You just want it to be more brighter. What am I doing, guys? I'm painting upside down. Oh, it's a little bit slanted, but you know what? That's fine. It's very forgiving. I can just paint over it. Oh, really? <laughs> Painting upside down. It's actually, it's not too bad. It's, um, I wouldn't be doing this for any other painting, but on a rock in what I'm doing right now, it's not too, it's not too hard for me. So, 
So if you think that your major is crooked, because I know that mine might be a little bit, I'm just going to put some blue around it to hide some. Hide some of the yellow just in case. And if you can't get thin lines, oh, so uh, you need a, if it's the brush, that could be the issue, but pressing very light and wispy, I think like wispy strokes, feathering, then you get thinner lines. But mine are not even not that thin either, so I don't think it's a big deal. So if you messed up the sun, just go back over it. Just go cover it with yellow again and try again. This is just my blue again. This is if you want to break up some of the yellow. Maybe you did a lopsided reflection kind of like me, but yeah, you can play around with it and it won't really mess it up. It just kind of adds to the streakiness in the water. So it looks like there's more streaks. It's okay, Colleen, just rewatch it later if you want to. So give me a thumbs up when that is done. Not used to being like this, same behind a rock. Great, some people are done. Perfect. Okay, so my rock is, well, my flagstone is different than my first one I painted on, but it was actually kind of interesting. It was kind of shaped like a diamond. This one, not so much, but um, it's going to vary for everybody else. Just kind of place it where you think it's a, it looks good because we're going to be doing uh, some of the lily pads and then we're going to go off and do the reeds and the grass on the sides. So for lily pads, the brush that you're going to be using is something like a medium. And I'm going to make some greens. Put this down for a second. To make green, I'm going to take my blue, and I have a light blue section, so I'm just going to keep using that, and I'm going to add yellow, right? Same section that I had my light blue for when I made my water. So that is just basically one green. It can be just like your typical green. Another way you can do it, because instead of just making the one green, you're going to make a couple greens. So it's going to be a bit more maybe some white, add it, make it nice and bright. Or you can make a more lime green, so yellow, more yellow, very little blue, add some white, and then you have, there you go, you have an assortment of greens to use. So this one, this one, and this one. I'm going to start with the one that's currently on my brush, that was the lime green. And 
cute to make lily pads, especially ones that are, you don't have to make like the full lily pad look. You can actually just, um, what I do is I just do little short lines and I'm going to, they are usually clustered together and more towards where like your reeds and grass and stuff is. So if mine are going to be over here and here, I think I'm going to start placing them. Don't worry about where you place them too much because it's better to place them now than after you do your grass because then it looks like patchwork and that you just try to fit them in. So just pressing basically, doing short little lines with my brush, especially along the bottoms here because that's where they're bigger. So you can see some of them overlap. They tend to do that. They collect together. So I'm starting with this color and then I'm just going to do a couple maybe along here and they get a lot smaller. See how small they are? There's like less pressing down with the brush. Still a bit like, you know, clustered and placing them. You don't have to go wild. They can be there. I think that's a good start with one color. And then I just want to switch my colors after that. And you're going to wash it and then just take a different green that I made. So the different green is more of a darker green. You can add, if you want to make it more earthy looking, just add a touch of black. It does make it, um, first of all, darker and it makes it look more like an earthy, realistic, natural green instead of super bright, vibrant greens. So pressing, pressing. couple here just kind of touch up on the same areas you've already done those first greens don't forget the very bottom make it look like it's going off your rock or your canvas like there's life beyond your canvas And another color. So I'm just going through the different greens that I had. So I'm going to go to that nice light, light one. Lots of white that I had there. And it makes it like a highlight. You can add more blue instead of just the yellow. You want to make it teal. And it just adds like, again, a nice little highlight on top of your lily pad. So you got some highlighted lighter lighter ones. So hopefully that went well for you guys. I know lily pads can be difficult only, and they're not hard. There's just, um, it's hard to visualize placing these little round things all over the place without making it look like green polka dots. You want to make it look like they're just naturally laid lily pads. So I'm just seeing for who is done. And I think, honestly, I think that would have been more difficult than the rest of the steps that we have, even though the dragonflies, they might look hard. They're really not. They're just shapes. Great. 
getting a bunch of thumbs up. Savannah, we are almost done already because we're painting on a rock. <laughs> we just still have the reeds on the side and the dragonflies. You put too many, I'm assuming you put just too many um, lily pads. If you think you put too many, wait for it to dry and just put uh, blue, like your water back over top. I think that might be, honestly, I think if you even run this under a tap, you could just wash it off in general and um, then just start over. That's if you're using a rock. If you're using a canvas, do not do that. And like I said, afterwards, you can weatherproof your rock so that you can leave it outside and it'll be nicely protected. Uh, Savannah, you're on a canvas, but you're probably, you're, it looks like you're catching up and you're doing great. Now, we're going to start our reeds and those, those are fun. Those are just a bunch of, um, again, I am using brush, smaller, and also a bit of a medium brush. Oops, that wasn't, that was a small one as well. This one. So pretty much um, how I've been doing down here with the lily pads, I did different greens. Keep those greens. Those are perfect because I'm going to use all of that for my grass and my reeds. And also I'm going to just make them darker for shadows. So adding definitely more black into it to create nice shadows. Yay. Thank you. Um, and how do you weatherproof? Oh, you have to go buy something. You have to go to the store and literally buy something. I think you can get it from like Home Depot, Canadian Tire, and get uh, weatherproof um, sealant. So I'm going to start with my medium. And okay, I'm going to start with a regular green. So I made one of the greens from my lily pads. It was blue, some yellow and a little bit of white. It wasn't anything too special. It looked like a, just like a normal green. So to start, um, a lot of it's kind of curving in. So I'm going to start from the bottom and just flick it outwards. Just want to get a nice fill on the sides and then you can start building from there. I'm actually going to go darker so you guys can see better. So just start with your regular green. I'm going to add some black so you guys can see a little bit better what I'm doing. And I went pretty high. So this is my medium brush and it's just like a quick couple of things to get a nice base on the sides too, other side. And I'm going right over my lily pads, it's fine. So it has to be filled at the bottom. And then I'm going to extend some of my pieces so that they stick out more individually. But you need to get a base, otherwise it just looks like um, not like a natural setting. It would look like it's very just like a haggard piece of grass. You only have like five pieces. That's not realistic. You want more. So I'm switching to a little bit smaller one and that's where I take some lighter green from when you had your lily pads before. Maybe a lime green or some just a lot of white and just extend some pieces from in that grass. So you can see I'm getting a little bit of a highlight already. Just like nice little thin lines. And also curve them towards the water a bit. They don't all have to be going the same direction, but generally they're kind of all curved, like they're engulfing in the area.
And again, use a little bit of water on your brush. I feel like it will help you paint on the rock. Get the other side. And try and stand up and do some of this too. Right in my left hand as I do the other side. So I'm going to take um, some blue and black. And the reason for that madness is because Again, it's a different, like more shadow, kind of putting it in between some of the strokes that I've made. So now you have some more depth and you can see individual pieces a bit more. And you can see I followed it up the sides quite a bit. I want to make it look like they're really tall. Okay, Tracy, yep. show me tomorrow. I like seeing your results. I know you've painted with me many times. So the last little highlight is just yellow and white. And that's just um just a little highlight again. A little finishing touch for some of the reeds and the grass. There we go. Now I have different greens in my grass area. And it looks, there's a lot of colors in it. And it's not just one flat color. So how are we doing with the grass? Hopefully well and easy. Yeah, Vicky, yeah, uh, like I'm just over here holding up this big flagstone. Like, okay, this is not too bad. And yeah, if you put it outside right now without sealing it with a um, water or weatherproofing it, it will likely just be um, how it started, just a plain rock. I wouldn't test it out.
And Leah, are you using a cereal box to paint on? And Deborah, yeah, if you have like one of those rocks that maybe have a lot of grooves and like dips and stuff, could be difficult to work with. But the good thing is you can rewatch and you just kind of maybe pick a different rock if you want to, or just do it on a canvas. And Hazel, you know what? Somebody just mentioned up before what you should use. I actually don't remember the name, but you would have to buy something unless you have the stuff laying around. Yeah, weather protector. So actually guys, we're almost done. This is um, very new for me to be able to be done so fast. We just have to do the dragonflies and you can do as many as you like. You can do any colors that you would like to do. So definitely 100% use your smaller brush. I'm just gonna use something like this. Nice detailed one. And okay, so you want to think about placement. Um, I kind of place them. I'll show you where I place them, but you want to think about colors too. I'm going to show you the color first so that I have it mixed before I lift up my rock again. I am going to do, which color should I do? What did I do? Oh, I'm going to do a nice dark purple because in here, uh, where my grass and lily pads are, I don't want to do similar colors. You won't see it very well. So I'm going to do purple. And that purple is dry, so I have to make a new one. Uh, this red. And then the blue. I didn't really add any white to start, actually. Uh, I see your question. Just hold on a sec. So just make any old purple that you want to make. It's going to be dark. That's perfect. And then what I do is I highlight it to make it look more... 3D, more realistic. A little bit of water that I add to it. If you're doing it on a rock, I find it's very helpful. So where did I put this one? Maybe I'll put this one right on the side. Sure. I'm going to start with um, a circle for the head. And this is a very detailed dragonfly, by the way. I didn't do, I put a little bit more effort into it instead of um, just a silhouette. But it's still very much doable. It's just mostly shapes. So I start with a little tiny circle. And Hazel, how did they get into painting? Well, basically, if your daughter, she's five, she's already into painting. Like, that's kind of how I was. As soon as I could, I just started right away. And then for the body, you're going to start with a nice long line, like ish kind of, you don't want to go extra, extra long because then you have to do a lot more detail onto this, but you can see basically how long I did. Um, but right at the top, I just kind of make it, the body a little bit more lumpy, like just rounder, more like a, cylinder kind of ovally shape and then just leave the tail thin. Marge, thanks for watching or painting along. Okay, so that's the body and hopefully you guys are following along really well with that. I haven't done any highlights yet. I'm still sticking with the one color. Sometimes twirling your small brush on your paint so that you don't have clumpy paint on it and it just gets stays thin. That's a good idea. Now for the wings, they're all on the upper part of the body. You don't want to, if you're making a butterfly, that's fine. 
but if you're making and achieving a dragonfly, all of the wings are set on the upper part of the body and the tail is mostly sticking out at the bottom. And the wings tend to be more straight across and not as much as like a butterfly where they're very round. They're more long than they are round. So I'm gonna go right up near the top, kind of like where the neck would be and just do like a nice long oval shape. So goes out, thins out at the end, goes back in, and then again, another one like that. And I like to connect them, they meet together in the middle, and they kind of spread out a little bit from each other near the ends of it. And I just do the other side, try to trying to match the length of it, but you know, if you can't really do that, that's fine. So that's a very simple, I mean, this looks good just as it is if you don't want to do highlights and stuff, but this is just um, my base coat before I do a couple things to it later. Um, so Hazel, actually the reply button is, I can directly reply to you just by clicking reply <laughs> right under your name, just underneath the, the chat um, that somebody said. And Bonnie, you can put glitter totally. All right, let me know you guys have that nice outline of your dragonfly so far. Okay, so I think that we have it. Perfect. Okay, now here's the more um, difficult part. It's not difficult, but it is just more tedious with black. Okay, just take a little bit of black on your brush. And all I do is I just start creating in here, just like some little veins in the wings. If you can fit them, don't do it if you can't. Otherwise, it becomes a clump. It becomes very clumpy. And I'm just, you know, branching out almost like you're making branches. That's all you have to do is just make little lines and then branch out and it looks like a vein. So you can keep it simple or you can, if you, if you have like a bigger um, dragonfly, you can do lots of them. Just do a couple though. I feel like you don't do too much like... <clears throat> Clumpy work if you're just doing like a couple like lines down the middle of each wing and then just doing a couple branched out lines to make it look like they're very veiny. Done. Don't keep going over it, trust me, it's going to turn just all black. You're going to fill it in. I'm sure your dragonfly is just fine. If anything, you can just make it bigger, depending on how big you started it with. But if you need to, you could just make it bigger. Um, that is, that's if you can. Now, and maybe some of you skip that step. That's totally fine as well. I know it can be a little nerve-wracking trying to do really like really small tiny lines i'm actually just grabbing um some white and adding it to where's my purple here i'm adding it to my purple so i'm getting a nice very light purple so make sure it's just so when you take your purple all you're doing is taking a little piece size of what you had created and made and then you're adding a nice scoop of white so it turns into a very light one. You want it to be a highlight because you want to see the difference in color when you start painting. And since the sun is right here, 
I am putting a highlight that is towards the sun. On the body, see that? And you're freaking me out. <laughs> so also, if you want to, you can just put a little highlight on some of the a bit of the wing here, just like on the top part, and then call it call it a day. There you go. If you're one of those people who like doing lots of detail, alternatively, you can take a little tiny bit of black and put it on the opposite side for a shadow, but I think it's good just like that. Um, Savannah was just saying that she can hear two of me. One is delayed. Maybe it's just her internet or her audio. So that is one. And I do one more dragonfly and it's positioned differently. If you don't want to take that extra step with me to make it um, different, uh, you can pretty much copy paste. Just do exactly what you did here, but place it in a different angle somewhere else with a different color. My next color is going to be orange because I don't really have orange in my painting. So I'm going to make orange, yellow and red, mostly yellow. Not too much red. Otherwise, um, there's nothing wrong with taking more red because then it just looks more like a red orange or maybe a coral color. It's really nice. And always add white. Then it will make it nice and light and bright and it will show against your background. No white, it's hard to see. And Mary, the highlight color was just white added to that purple. So all I did was take that same purple that I used to make the outline and fill in the dragonfly, and then I added white so it makes a nice highlight. Okay, so I have my nice light orange. And I think actually I did pink in my original, so maybe I'll just add a bit more red just to try to copy it a bit more. Just in case you guys are trying to follow along that looks kind of like a coral color and I just really like that color. And Savannah, you're hilarious. Um, yes, two pages would make perfect sense. So one is right here, it's a little bit lower and it kind of looks like it's swooping down, definitely looking very different. Um, again, circle, start with that circle. So to make it look very swoopy, you want to create, again, that nice long line and then that little bit poofiness for the body just by the head and leave the tail nice and thin. See how it's kind of going upwards? It's like uh, flicking upwards. I'm just going to try and make it a bit brighter so it's not too light, or sorry, it's not like um, blending in with my background. You have to definitely keep in mind you want white on this so that you can see it against the, the blue. All right, so um, to make the wings, because now it's sideways, it's not like you're making, a whole bunch of wings like this. They're going to be more flicking upwards. And um, I did, what did I do? I did like three, I did three. You, only, you don't want to do four. It's going to be too, too much work and it's going to look very, it'll just be busy basically. And you won't be able to distinguish um, each one. So I'm going to start with one. And I just kind of do like a line. And don't really make the full 
3D one like this one, like it's like a beginning and it loops around. I just do a line so that you only see it kind of sideways. Okay, so hopefully this is making sense so far. And now I'm going to make another one. And it has a little bit more of like a triangle shape, very much like a triangle shape, just not as wide, a little bit longer and more narrow. Going over that line just so that you can definitely be seen against the blue. And I did one more. One more. So I'm just grabbing some more water. All right. Um, I think my other one was like right about here. Doing this upside down, I'm pretty sure I'm doing it the way I want it to. Just kind of overlapping. Hopefully it's not too um, I don't know, mush together. I think I'm going to add a little bit of more red. Oops. Yeah, I'm just going to add a little bit more red to outline it a bit more. So I'm just going to outline it with some more red so it can be seen like the outline can see it clear Okay, hopefully that helps you guys. And you can make adjustments if it needs to be a little bit bigger, maybe in the body. I actually just, I just ended up adding more red because I feel like I can see it a bit better against the blue. So kind of just like what I did before, exactly what I did before, I put with some black. You don't have to remember. Um, first of all, outlining the lower part of the head and the body might be more contrasted and you can see it better. And then doing little veins if you want to, just be careful, be very careful. I'm only doing just a few, not to make it too much, maybe outlining some of the wings a little bit. And then your highlights, just add a lot more white. To your whatever color you're using, if you're using um, pink, orange, coral, And highlighting the top part of the head because that's a little bit where most of the light is hitting it. And there we go.
So that is the rock painting. Yay. And Virginia, your dragonflies are not good. Um, well, I mean, I know we're our own worst critics, right? So maybe you can do some other things, like maybe it just needs more highlighting, or maybe um, there's probably a way to work around it. And it depends on the surface. If you're using a canvas, you can easily just paint over it when it's dry and try again. So let me know, guys, uh, what you thought of this rock painting. This was our first rock painting. We don't really do these. We do canvas ones, but this was <laughs> tiring to hold up. And I'm glad that it didn't have to be for as long as we normally do our events. And I painted upside down. That's another thing. But post your results in the comments. We love to see them. Yes, this would be a nice little addition to the garden. You know what? I am redoing my garden. It was very much overgrown and neglected because I've just been painting all the time. So this will likely go in there right by my walkway. So I'm going to make this available to rewatch for you guys if you need to take more time. I know that some of you are doing on Canvas, so um, you probably need more time. And post in the comments. Uh, your results. Um, Savannah, that's a good tip. Thanks, guys. I will, I'm sure I'll see you guys again in the future. You can check out our events tab. That's where we have a lot of our events coming up. And um, yeah, don't forget to like us on Facebook.